Tibetan culture and history started uh, nearly 4,000 years ago. Something like um, Indian history in China. But in general, people don't know that. Because you see, uh, we uh, go very much uh, how is situation present. So today, uh, for example, India and uh, China, they are gigantic country. Also, when we see culture and history, we consider they are more important than Tibet. But if we go background of Tibetan history, then we can understand also after development of Buddhism in Tibet, like the King Sonsen Gambo, we can understand how Tibet was a powerful country and occupied many provinces of China, for example. But uh, today, if we talk these things, it seems ridiculous. That's, uh, that's the real situation. Time changed, and we don't know how change. Many uh, places and uh, countries and nations, their, uh, their history also cancelled. In example, we are, we are talking in general Odiana and Shambhala and the country of Tuja, that's a country um, source of Tibetan uh, tantrism teaching, uh, a kind of tantrism. So all these countries, today we don't know where, where is it. And the many uh, Western scholars, they say Odiana is, the capital of Odiana is in Pakistan. Swat, not Pakistan. But not sure. That's the example. Nobody knows where is Shambhala. And many people believe Shambhala and Odiana, this country become a kind of paradise and disappeared on the earth and uh, talk more fantasy point of view. But in the real sense, all these countries changed with situation. Islamic country like uh, Turkey, there, there had been invasion and uh, com completely change the situation. Nobody knows history. That's the example. So Tibet in ancient time, source of Tibetan culture, knowledge, or oh, we call the Xiangyong, Kingdom of Xiangyong. The capital of Kingdom of Xiangyong is near um, Kailash, around Kail Mount Kailash. There are many places. For example, uh, many Westerners, the scholars, they went to Saparang, Pauline. They consider that's a very ancient capital, but it means ancient capital uh, for Tibetan, Tibetan kings. The last king generation, Salama Yeshiva, and the lots of Rinchen Zombo translator, famous, they lived there. That's considered very ancient, but in a real sense, that's not ancient. There are more ancient history in Tibet. The uh, history of Xiangzhong, kingdom of Xiangzhong. And uh, in that time also there is, uh, for example, writing of Xiangzhong, religion of Xiangzhong, that is the burn, burn tradition, pre-Buddhist religion of Tibet. So if we study a little about this field, about Xiangzhong and, uh, and the burn tradition, then we can discover Tibet, history of Tibet is not only started recently uh, with Buddhism tradition, but go ahead. Not only source of Tibetan king, first king, Nyakse Tembo, that is the first Tibetan king, but 
much more earlier than Yaku Sambo. First, when there, there was Xiang uh, kings, at that time there is no even name of Tibet. So then Tibet come later. So Xiang Zhong, in the, in the time of Xiang Zhong kingdom, is divided in three parts. Saying Xiang Zhong proper, inner Xiang Zhong, in the middle Xiang Zhong, and the outer Xiang Zhong. Middle Xiang Zhong is the center, um, central capital of Xiang Zhong. But inner Xiang Zhong, most today, we can find uh, in under Russia, and uh, many uh, places like uh, uh, also part of uh, Islamic country in Xinjiang, in the different parts near Karakorum, all these parts. Some Bangalore ancient books explain there are 32 tribes in the Xiangzhong, in the Xiangzhong. So they, they are belonging to Xiangzhong at that time, the kingdom of Xiangzhong. But later then, completely uh, separated. And uh, then, Today, for example, also there is no easy to communication, also with language, for example. And the only uh, Xiangzhong, the uh, middle Xiangzhong, is remained till the famous Tibetan king of Songtai Gambo. There is also Xiangzhong king. So when we start uh, study, for example, Tibetan history or ancient history, we must divide periods, periods or epochs. The first time only there is Xiangzhong Kingdom. Yes, no Tibet. At that time, Tibet, most part of Tibet is belonging to outer Xiangzhong. For example, in explanation of Ote Xiangzhong, there is a Wu and Sang and also uh, Ando, two uh, Ando Terpa, the upper Ando, all belonging to Xiangzhong. And then there are, like uh, at that time, Sumba and Waja, there are different uh, the groups. They all sort is the same family. In Tibetan, we say Miu Dung to uh, six, uh, six uh, families. So they are all considered uh, Tibetans. And then later, the time, maybe uh, the time of uh, nearly time of Buddha Shachamuni, then someone say same time, someone say later. In any case, they started. Tibetan kingdom, new kingdom, with Nyatse Sambo. Nyatse Sambo is the first Tibetan king. In uh, later uh, in Tibet, uh, all Tibetan history presented by Buddhist uh, vision. So because uh, all scholars, Buddhist scholars, they presented all Buddhism stars. So then they say Tibetan people, origin of Tibetan people come from India. Also Tibetan king come origin is, uh, uh, is India. Buddhism come from India, everything come from India. Before Tibet is a, is a wide country, there is nothing. So that's a, that's a Buddhist version. So we follow in general officially that way. But when we do research, Principle is not uh, being Buddhism or Buddhist or someone, but we, we try to discover which is the real condition. And particularly, you see, uh, present situation of Tibet is very, very dangerous because uh, we are under Tibet, Tibet uh, Tibetans under Chinese, Chinese rule. You know how many Chinese is in China and how many Tibetans very few, few Tibetans. And few Tibetans uh, also in Tibet, for example, last year I went in Tibet, 
I spent a long time in East Tibet, in center and West Tibet. So I saw concretely how is the real situation. For example, in West Tibet, there is problem, also education, also economic problem. People very poor, they, they, they have nothing. And also they couldn't uh, have any uh, education can receive. In East Tibet, for example, people, they have economically better than West Tibet and Central Tibet. But they have no education. They couldn't receive education. If you go visit in Tibet officially, you couldn't see these things. Because you go only headquarters. You, maybe you stop at little headquarters. Headquarters, there are all these like a primary school and a middle school. Why? Because the headquarters are uh, there are Chinese officers, offices. So also there are many Tibetan people who are serving, working in these offices for their, their, their children. They will want to receive education. For that reason, there are many schools. But Tibetans, they don't, don't live in the headquarters in general. There are only a few Tibetans, maybe someone do business, in example. Most people, they are living in a countryside. Tibet is a very large country. And they move always because they, they live with animals, yak. So yak couldn't stay only one place. At least, in uh, they uh, must be moved four times one year. So then, when they move, they, uh, they live very distant from uh, headquarters. They couldn't send their children to school. I saw many, many hundreds of children, really, threatening young uh, children and a small child. The very, very clever and very nice, like uh, Western children say, there's no any difference. But they have no any possibility to receive education. And uh, they are growing up without education. So that's the real situation in Tibet. And the monasteries, for example, most monasteries destroyed <coughs> during the Cultural Revolution. Today, <coughs> rebuilding. Many uh, monasteries, particularly in uh, place, important places, headquarters, and uh, on the road, if there are some monastery state, also government gave money for rebuild these monasteries because uh, uh, that's also important for tourists. That's the reason. <coughs> so Tibetans, they are very, very, very much engaged to rebuild monasteries and. Uh, some kind, some monasteries, and not on the road, and uh, some some quiet places, they couldn't get money. They asked to get permission. Some of these also they didn't get permission. That's the example. So going that way, developing monasteries today. But even there are some monasteries. There is no no monks who has knowledge understanding of teaching or something. For example, my country, uh, my place where, where I spent when I wa wa was young, there is a monastery, it has uh, th more than 300 monks. But during Cultural Revolution, they escaped from that monastery to the north. And then Chinese, they sent thousands and thousands of soldiers after that. And they killed the old monks. So they destroyed the monastery. They considered their anti-revolution. Revolution. So then, later, 19, after 1978, the Chinese uh, changed uh, their policy and uh, they said, now you can rebuild the monastery. But there are only two or three uh, old monks. And uh, then, few, 
few young monks, they are becoming monks, but they don't know anything because uh, these old people, they, uh, they don't know anything about teaching. Only they know two or three puja offerings, rites, but they don't know meaning. Only they uh, know how to read these pujas, and that's all. And they taught these young people how to do these puja. And they are living in a monastery with dress of monks. They have really feeling very, very, they participate and they wish to learn. But who teach? There is no one. When I spent there maybe more than 20 days in that monastery, I tried to teach every day they are very much willing to learn. But you see, uh, 20 days couldn't do very much. I was also very tired when I arrived there. And also in Tibet, it's very high. When I arrived there, always uh, my, my health is not good. At least I have no voice. First thing, I lost my voice. <laughs> so then I couldn't communicate. That's the example. In ancient time in Tibet, there is no public school. Chinese always, they do this publicity. Say Tibet is very, very um, feudal country and a very underdeveloped country, uh, primitive country. There is no single public school. Today we build many public schools, etc. That's true. In ancient times, there is no public school. That's true. But there are thousands and thousands of monasteries everywhere. And in a monastery, there are thousands and thousands of people can give teaching and education, can educate. And all countryside people, children, they try to send in a monastery and uh, parents, they have also, they will be monks. But even they don't be monks, they receive education. There is possibility to receive education in the ancient time. But today, there is nothing, this thing. So it's very, very uh, difficult. And uh, when in a headquarters, Tibetan students, when uh, they started in a, uh, in a primary school, and uh, then students, uh, later then the uh, most uh, uh, like uh, middle school, etc., they sent in China. Because for learning Chinese, and also Chinese politics and, uh, and uh, language, etc. So also that is another reason Tibetan families, even someone has a possibility to send in the headquarters, they don't want to say, because uh, they say uh, their children become Chinese. So that is a, that's the Tibetan present, <laughs> present situation. So even there are Tibet, it has uh, um, the ancient history, culture, belonging to uh, teaching, belonging to Burma tradition, ancient pre-Buddhist uh, religion. And uh, later than the time of uh, Songsen Gambo, the uh, 8th century, they uh, introduced Buddhism from India and developed widely Buddhism. You know that. So then, there are many schools and traditions, etc. But today, everything become a little early, I figure there, it says there are some monasteries, but none other. Only uh, we have uh, a, a few, few people who has really Tibetan uh, religion knowledge or culture, etc. in India or outside. But also these old people, most uh, old masters, they are passing away because we are in a living time. So it's a very, uh, I think it's uh, not so really easy. It's a danger, Tibetan, uh, Tibetan culture, knowledge, everything. So I think it's a very, very important, really. People know in the world, every, uh, everywhere.
particularly people, intellectual people, they know value of Tibetan culture. It has a value not only for Tibetans, but for all, all people. It means if we lost that value, lost for everybody, not for only Tibetans. I try to, uh, to explain this uh, and uh, introduce the value of Tibetan culture. Last year in Peking, I spent three, three months in Peking giving uh, lectures, you know, lessons about Tibetan history, ancient religion, Buddhism, and everything, knowledge, uh, and the value of Tibetan knowledge to, um, to the institute, uh, minorities institute. So there are many uh, uh, students, Tibetan students particularly, because uh, in, in that institute, there are all Chinese minorities. They consider minorities like Tibetan, Mongolian, and the Yuguri, and uh, they, uh, they count uh, 52 or 53 different minorities. So uh, between all these, uh, these uh, minorities, Tibet, Tibetans are one of the, the most important. So there are more than 300 students in institute. And uh, they are all very involved and uh, very interested. And uh, I discovered also Tibetan young people, in, uh, even they, they grow up in China and under Chinese education, they feel really very, very strongly they feel Tibetans, never feel Chinese. And uh, they want to do something. They want to preserve Tibetan culture. And uh, they, they have great willing to learn, not only like uh, history, but also Buddhism and, uh, and the teaching. Last uh, two or three weeks, I explained only Buddhism. I have no really idea at the beginning I can explain Buddhism or Dzogchen teaching because uh, Chinese, they ask me more introduce for Tibetan culture, history, etc. But then I, at the, end, at the end, I said, the really essence of Tibetan culture is teaching, Buddhism teaching and Bambu teaching. So you must not limit, and uh, when you do like research, you must not think, I am a follower of uh, materialism, for example. That is the idea of Chinese. They say always, oh, we are materialism, and uh, we do everything, uh, research and every, everything, do only that way. Then I, am, I said, you couldn't do really research that way. If you convinced uh, someone, and uh, you have an idea limited way, it doesn't mean that you are doing research. You, you do research, it means you must be free. Free, that's a relative. But if you do really a research, then you, you must be free. And uh, then I said, also, you must know essence, really, most important uh, Tibetan, Tibetan culture, uh, like a heart, is spiritual knowledge. You see, today, for example, in the world, everywhere, Tibetan lamas, they are going and giving teaching, and uh, many Westerners, they are learning. Why? Because they felt there is something valuable. We are speaking, teaching, teaching, it means to really make understand our real condition. That's all. Teaching, it doesn't mean a kind of dogma, uh, or we say uh, we must change and uh, we take something or we accept something and uh, we convince uh, something. Teaching it means only a very simple way. We, we uh, observe ourselves, we discover how is our situation. For example, every, everywhere in the world, every day, people speak free, freedom, freedom. 
Chinese also they say, oh, our political system is free. Also other political system, every, everybody say uh, we are free. But there are many points of view of free. <coughs> In a real sense, if we don't discover really our condition, our limitation, our ego, we never can find free, really. Even we are speaking free. So that's the example. <coughs> In a teaching, in Tibet, for example, we have a uh, teaching of Burn tradition, Asia, and uh, later Buddhism, but <coughs> essential teaching is really for understanding better situation of the individual. For example, Burn tradition, uh, their, uh, their way of, um, of learning principle of teaching is presented more speaking about energy. Energy which is a relationship of energy of individual and the world where we are, which is the relationship. <coughs> which kind of influence of energy we can receive negativity from outside? Why we receive negativity? It depends our our condition, position of energy, for example. They are very, very engaged to learn and to go deeper knowledge, that knowledge. In a, in a Burma tradition, most things, uh, the uh, methods are not presented like Buddhism style of study, philosophy, etc., but more like a ritual thing. <coughs> But all ritual, any kind of ritual, at the beginning of ritual, then there is a kind of presentation. They call the chora. Cho, it means uh, choga in Tibetan. It means a ceremony. Rap it means uh, like a history of generation. How transmitted this and uh, continued this uh, this system and uh, how is the source of this uh, system. So that's uh, called the chora. If you see uh, in the chora, then each ceremony or <coughs> ritual things, they have precise their explanation, origin, which is origin, which is the function. So they explain also uh, which is the uh, which is the uh, uh, the condition of individual air related with this uh, ritual? Then with uh, mountain and the country and the nature, everything. So that's the principle of the burn. It means then they are <coughs> they are trying to go discover really the. Uh, uh, condition of individual <coughs> for overcoming problem. Same way also in Buddhism. You see Buddhism when Buddha taught firstly teaching in uh, in Sarana to his uh, five dis first disciple. That teaching is called Four Noble Truths. First the Noble Truth is a noble truth of suffering. Suffering because uh, every, everybody knows suffering is an effect. Everybody knows how, what it means suffering. In general, we, uh, we know suffering and problems, but in general, we are very much engaged to struggle with, uh, with uh, suffering and problems. So Buddha is teaching suffering is an effect not principal uh, thing is that you are struggling with that, but you learn from that there is cause. You can discover that cause. And uh, if you discover cause, then you can stop and you don't have 
that problem. So that is the phone number two. How you stop then giving males? That's the last number two. So we say noble truth of suffering, noble truth of the core, and noble truth of the cessation, how we stop that. And then noble truth of the path, path is method, how we can stop different way after our different chemistry, for example. So that is also uh, knowing our situation. If we have problem, we have really a condition why we have that, uh, that problem. So principle of teaching uh, about like uh, Burm tradition and uh, Buddhism is only a very simple way for make understand how, how is our situation, our, our condition. If we know that, not necessary to be a kind of consideration of religion or something a limited way, but everybody we need really that. We have always problems. There is no one who has no problem because we have existence, material level. We have body. If we have body, then we have many limitations of body. For example, if we, uh, we need to eat every day. For eating and dressing, we are working all the whole life, making money. Why we make money? We need because uh, we have that problem. So nobody can say we have no problem. Always we have problem. But problem of physical body is less important in practical way. More important, more complicated, difficult is problem of mind and our energy. When we have a problem of energy, then we have no really uh, much idea how we can overcome. For example, in Burma tradition, they are very much engaged to learn and to study and to, to overcome this kind of problem related with our energy. So you can notice if you learn a little Tibetan medicine, for example. In Tibetan medicine, medicine, Tibetan medicine is very ancient tradition. Source is uh, from Changjung and then developed later through uh, Ayurveda system from India and the Chinese system of medicine, then developed and uh, become very large, uh, rich Tibetan medicine. But source is always come from Burma tradition and uh, in Xiangyong. So there is characteristic of this medicine. First of all, <coughs> when we do uh, the uh, ex examination of a uh, person. First of all, we, uh, we, we do analysis. That person has problem. It, uh, it has a relationship with uh, negative energy influence or not. That is the first thing. We decide it has a negative influence or not. If there is no negative influence energy, in place, then we go directly, ordinary way. We, uh, we cure with medicine and um, diet, etc. There are many, many kinds of therapy system. If there are some negative uh, influence, in this case, then we, uh, we need another kind of therapy, not only medicine. Medicine, in this case, become only secondary. So then, like a Burma, they do many uh, ritual things for working with, uh, with energy. And uh, sometimes we consider uh, there are provocations, negative provocations from different kinds of beings. In general, we, uh, we uh, people who are more engaged with uh, uh, material, uh, materialism vision point of view, then they, they say, oh, we don't believe different kinds of beings. When someone speaks like uh, gods and uh, divinities and 
the spiritual, etc. Then they say, oh, this is the too much uh, um, religion style of feeling or vision. But in a real sense, that's not true. How we can say then there is no being in the universe if we know today, scientifically, there are infinite galaxies, solar systems, different kinds, infinite dimensions. How we can say there is no being? Of course there is beings, different kinds of beings. If there is being, uh, different kinds of beings, we couldn't say they, they, they have no capacity, someone more capacity than human, someone less. We can see also in between animals how it. Sometimes we, we say we don't believe because we couldn't see, but that is not good reason. We couldn't say well, there is no, no one we, when we couldn't see. We couldn't see also past time. Future, we couldn't see, but how we can negate? We couldn't see if there are some something distance. We have not that capacity. But we couldn't negate that. There is many kinds of beings we couldn't see. Same way, for example, if we walk one day in summertime in a, in a garden, we can see many small animals. They can see, they couldn't see us, many of these, they couldn't see us, but we can see them. So that's an example. In the universe, there are many, many beings. We couldn't see them, but they couldn't see us. Or we can see each other. Or we couldn't see each, uh, couldn't see each other. There are many, many uh, situations. Someone has more capacity, really. And uh, if there are some being more capacity, capacity it means uh, someone can also control such energy. And we provocate to them because we don't know what is happening. And then they address the negativities to us. And we pay always without knowing what, what is going on. That, uh, for example, in Tibetan medicine, how explained like uh, such diseases like a cancer or all these things, they have provocation of a ne negative energy. So if we have no that knowledge, there is no way how we can overcome. So that is the example. This is a, this kind of energy function and work developed very much in the ancient Bambo, Bambo tradition. Ancient Bambo tradition is more or less similar um, uh, shamanism system. So for that reason, many uh, Western uh, scholars, they say, they say the name shaman come from burn. I, I'm not sure that, but many, uh, many scholars, they say, maybe that there is something true also. Because uh, the teacher, uh, most important teacher of burn tradition, uh, is uh, called the Shen Ra. Shen is family name. So many, uh, many scholars, they say, come from that Shen, then this name of Shaman. But I don't know if that is true or not. In any case, they are very, very uh, similar. And also Burma tradition, ancient Burma tradition, and uh, also Indian American people, the day ceremony, how they believe, it's very, very close. When I went to visit Hopi and Navajo people, and also Mesa Verde, there, there is a many Indian ancient uh, term. People were lit. And I saw many kivas. You see, kiva is a place where they do, they perform ceremony. And uh, in kiva, they build under uh, under earth, and uh, there is a place who perform this ceremony, stay, live there, and then there is place of fire, place of uh, air, where enter air, etc. Just the same in a bamboo, ancient bamboo tradition, there is called chung it means uh, something like a 
uh, temple or castle, cut it means castle in general. And um, they build us Jonka for performing such practice. Particularly there is a practice called Mele. Mele it means fire, Re is mountain. Fire mountain, that's the kind of God, uh, divinity in Bambo tradition. So there are many uh, ceremonies related with this divinity. That's one of the oldest uh, Bambo tradition from also its uh, transmission related to uh, time of Temba Shira till today. So, um, so in this uh, the, uh, explanation of Jonka, they are a precise explanation. Where live this uh, Bumbo who, who perform this rite? There is a place of fire, not only fire, but uh, on the fire, there is a, a what do you say, pot, a very uh, big pot, and uh, in, inside there's a water. In the water, they put many kinds of medicine, and uh, then make fire and boil. And uh, then th this uh, water is called wachu, empowered with mantra, and uh, used very much this uh, water for uh, for take away negativities. And uh, also, when there are some illness for stopping this uh, illness, um, etc. And uh, sometimes also they check their uh, practitioners, their uh, their power. If they introduce, they produce their function of mantra or not. For example, in the water boiling, and then they make a. a <coughs> Uh, eagle, small eagle by butter, and uh, then they, this uh, practitioner in, in power with mantra, uh, pronouncing mantra in power, uh, this, uh, this butter uh, eagle, and then put in a water, boiling water, and then this eagle is uh, going in, inside because the water is boiling. It says the eagle is flying, but uh, never melt. So it means then they produce this uh, power of mantra. That's the example. And also there is place where enter air elements and then purification with uh, smokes, etc. So it's uh, very, very similar in Indian American uh, the, the system, for example. So in a, in a word, not only uh, that, but there are many, many, you know already, uh, many parts, shaman system, religion. So these are very, very ancient system. So it uh, shows also Tibetan, really, uh, Tibetan culture, origin. The world tradition is very, very ancient and uh, viable knowledge, still alive. But you see, uh, Today we have burn, <coughs> modern burn, modern burn, burn and bumbo are too much uh, influenced by Buddhist because in Tibet developed a very strong uh, Buddhism and then it's not so easy uh, to continue Buddhism, uh, Burma tradition uh, like uh, ancient stuff. So then they uh, transform. They integrated more Buddhism style. And the later young uh, generation of Burmbo, uh, modern Burmbo, they believe very much <coughs> also how they are doing all influenced uh, Buddhist burn. <coughs> they believe really burn, really, <coughs> really burn is that. <coughs> but, uh, but really, ancient burn, we can find the only in a, in a ritual things. Ritual things are not very much used in the Burmbo monasteries, but in the countryside. There are some old men, old person who are expert to do this kind of rites. And in the Burmbo monasteries, they don't consider very important this kind of uh, person. They say, oh, this is a 
people who who does uh, practice uh, of burn ball, they call the burn of the cause. They they consider we are burn of the uh, the fruit. It means more uh, Buddhist style. More they consider more uh, higher and more important because that's the influence of Buddhism. Also, many Buddhism, Buddhist uh, masters, they explain, saying, saying um, in Burma tradition, there is no philosophy point of view and explanations, etc. They consider less important. But in a real sense, not necessary to be uh, explanation you can find like a Buddhist style. There is another point of view. Oh, they are really, if we learn with a ritual thing, their consideration of element, their consideration of individual, etc., completely different from Buddhist. So, th uh, these are really uh, something Tibetan, Tibetan culture, ancient culture. I wrote many books um, about this, uh, and still I'm writing for having more uh, knowledge about also for uh, people, particularly for Tibetans, because uh, if Tibetans they want to to preserve their culture, I think most important is then they know history and the value of Tibetan culture, and also I I hope very much also Westerners really the scholars they they know that principle and uh, they. They do something. I am also now uh, in Italy uh, next next year going to open a kind of institute for Tibetan studies, particularly uh, for preserving that way. That institute is called Xiangyong Institute. You know, Xiangyong is a symbol of Tibetan uh, ancient culture. So this is a um, very very short way. Uh, my presentation of this um, uh, past and uh, present and future because uh, we have no much time. I'm very sorry. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, that's uh, really, uh, I think, uh, essence of all uh, all teachings in general, and particularly in uh, in Buddhism uh, and Burmo tradition. For example, in Burmo, uh, very very essential of teaching of Burmo, they consider the is uh, Dzogchen teaching. Dzogchen uh, called the Shangjung Nianjiu. That's the really original Dzogchen teaching of Burmo tradition. Uh, come from Xiangyong and introduced that teaching in the time of Song King Song Zheng Gambo in the 8th century uh, in Tibet. And uh, then essen essential of teaching of Buddhism is also Dzogchen teaching, transmitted by Guru Padma Sambhava, also uh, disciple of Guru Padma Sambhava, Bhairochana, he went to Odiana and uh, introduced uh, uh, in Tibet, and uh, they considered very, very essential teaching. So, in the Dzogchen, essential of Dzogchen teaching is discovering our real nature, our condition. It is a. Uh, it doesn't mean only we are speaking like uh, discovering nature of mind, but also before nature of mind, we discover what is mind, what is uh, our existence. 
what, what is our situation. If we know how is our situation, then uh, also become everything, become very easy to overcome if there are some problems. That's the reason. Picture of Tibet. Picture of Tibet. I am. Um, <coughs> it's not so easy to say really precise, but um, but I I, I think uh, it's a very important is a preserve Tibetan culture and knowledge. That is the, the first thing. And also, I hope very much. Um, not only Tibetans, but uh, also Westerners, they, uh, they integrate uh, knowledge, Tibetan knowledge, uh, a little in their, uh, their uh, knowledge. And they use uh, all um, knowledge which has uh, available for, for everybody. Uh, that way also, uh, that become a greater support for Tibetan culture, for, for continuation. And uh, I hope also Chinese, uh, they really understand a little more value of Tibetan culture because um, <coughs> you see, uh, if they destroy or even they don't destroy directly, automatically destroy, then no remain after, after 50, 60, 100 years, so then Maybe they are also they are sorry and later really. I guess in the Western world we have so many um, different varieties of education that we can choose that we want to learn about. For the Tibetan people, if you could choose one area of education for the for the people of Tibet, what would that be? Would it be a, in a university type? Atmosphere, or would you teach them the basis of Buddhism as their education for life? Yeah, like uh, uh, knowledge of Buddhism, also knowledge of characteristic of Burma mm -hmm. tradition, how it's principle, and also there are like uh, Tibetan medicine, Tibetan astrology, and Tibetan history, value of this uh, history. If we know really value of Tibetan history, then we discover also value of Tibetan culture. If you, you see in the university, all the world, uh, they have also uh, like a study of Indian culture and history, and uh, like Chinese uh, culture and history, but not Tibetan. Why? Because nobody knows uh, why it has a value. So if someone knows that value, then something alive continues. That's a very, very important support for so acknowledging your ancestors and the history yeah. of your own. Yeah. And would you say that value lies chiefly in techniques of spiritual cultivation? Yeah. Because uh, Tibetan knowledge, uh, uh, we must consider something alive, not a uh, date, uh, like a history or only book. Otherwise, then there's no more really touch of life. Can, can you give us some idea of the diversity of different diseases that exist within Tibetan culture? Mm -hmm. like, can you give us some idea about the diversity of diseases that exist within traditional Tibetan culture? Like, yeah. For example, you have what? cancer and uh, kinds of diseases. Like diseases, yeah. 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 traditionally. In Tibetan medicine, you met. Uh, no, the kinds of disorders that existed, like for example, cancer, was that quite? Ah, you may um, provocation. Um, just the type of diseases that were present. Yeah, in a, in a Tibetan medicine, for example, you see that uh, we have a uh, official, uh, m more important, uh, we call the Tibetan medicine for tantras. 
that is uh, more official and uh, <coughs> they are all kind of explanation. But not only these four tantras, there are many, many other visionary uh, teachings also about medicine. And all these uh, visionary teachings uh, of medicine, there are explanations uh, not only limited, uh, how explained in four tantras, but related with uh, time and uh, periods uh, and the circumstance. For example, we are going ahead then, always uh, there will be also different circumstances and uh, also more than illness, for example. So, um, um, in, a, in, a, um, in some, some, some kinds of uh, this uh, visionary uh, medicine explanation, there are many, many uh, diseases mentioned and explained how uh, will be. Also, still we have no really, we, we don't know very, very, very well. That's example, there are uh, not a kind of limit, limitation, but uh, there are many things to, to discover also. 